Waveform capnography is an important new tool in the treatment of both cardiac arrest and the perfusing patient. To put it simply, capnography measures the byproduct of metabolism, CO2. If you compare it to a fireplace, it's the smoke that's measured by waveform capnography. Where there's fire, there's smoke. Where there's no smoke, there's no fire. In the cardiac arrest patient, we use capnography to measure whether we're doing compressions adequately, in which case we should have expired CO2 of at least 10. We also use it to measure whether or not the patient has a perfusing rhythm or has the return of a pulse despite the fact that we can't feel it. Once you have a return of spontaneous circulation, you'll have a spike in capnography to at least 40, at which time you can stop compressions. Capnography sensors can be placed both on endotracheal tubes, oxygen masks, or nasal cannulas. Obviously, in the case of cardiac arrest, we prefer to measure CO2 off an endotracheal tube. In addition, waveform capnography is required to validate placement of the endotracheal tube at intubation or any time when the patient is moved. It's our only tool that tells us definitively that the endotracheal tube is where it belongs and has stayed there. In the case of the perfusing patient, capnography becomes important to tell whether the patient is underventilated or overventilated. In conjunction with the SpO2 or pulse oximetry, it can be a very valuable tool. Pulse oximetry will tell you what has happened um, over the past two or three minutes. Using waveform capnography, you can actually predict whether the patient is going to be in trouble or not. You do that by measuring the amount of CO2 that's being exhaled with each breath. A normal patient will exhale between 35 and 45 per minute. However, if they're not breathing adequately, their CO2 levels will quickly begin to rise. That will show up much faster on waveform capnography than it will on pulse oximetry. On the other side of the spectrum, someone who's breathing very fast or hyperventilating will blow off their CO2 much quicker and therefore the numbers will fall dramatically, both of which will happen pretty quickly.